Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about the actions of parathormone. So this has been asked previously in many university questions as an essay question. Like for example, this is a sample essay question. A patient with parathyroid hormone deficiency 10 days after inadvertent damage to parathyroid glands during thyroid surgery. Answer the following questions based on your knowledge in physiology. Explain the mechanisms underlying two clinical signs. Describe the physiological actions. Mention the normal blood calcium level and add a note on significance of intracellular calcium. And also, it can be asked as a answer briefly or a short note question also like actions of parathoma. So we will see how to answer such a question. So you can start the answer with an introduction which uh, describes from where is parathormone formed. So parathormone is secreted by the parathyroid glands and parathyroid glands contains two types of cells which are the chief cells which secrete parathormone and the oxyphil cells. Okay. Here you can also mention an important point that the receptors for sensing plasma calcium that is the calcium sensing receptor CASR is present in the chief cells okay so that is how the parathyroid gland or the parathyroid cell detects whether the plasma calcium is less or not now moving on to the major actions of parathormone it has, the action of parathormone is primarily on the bone it has also got actions on the kidney as well as actions on the intestine so we'll see each one by one first we'll see actions on the bone so on the bone it mainly acts to in stimulate osteoclastic activity so we know osteoclasts are cells that cause bone resorption right it causes bone resorption and thereby it increases the level of calcium because more calcium is mobilized from the bone right and thereby it increases the serum calcium levels so at this point we can just move on to an advanced level because in many MBBS textbooks I have seen this type of explanation also. So we will just try to understand how parathormone acts on the bone. So suppose this is a bone and it has got many osteocytes present. And on the surface we know we have got osteoblasts. So when the parathormone is released it acts on these osteoblasts to cause increased expression of two important ligands which are the rank ligand and the macrophage colony stimulating factor. So these are the two ligands that are in, that are increased expression when parathormone acts on the osteoblast. So now what happens? See our pre-osteoclasts were there which have receptors for these ligands for the rank ligand as well as for the MCSF. The pre-osteoclasts had already receptors but they were prevented from being activated by the presence of a decoy that is osteoprotegrin. So now parathormone will inhibit this OPG as well as stimulate osteoblasts to produce these factors. So what will happen? The pre-osteoclasts will come and bind with the original ligand and then they will be activated to form osteoclasts. So now the osteoclasts will be formed, will be activated and they have many lysosomes as well as they have got a ruffled membrane and at that membrane they have got many acid secreting cells also. So on, through these acid secreting channels they produce substances that cause resorption of bone right so that is how there will be increased bone resorption and thus more calcium will be mobilized from the bones and there will be increased serum calcium levels so I hope this concept is clear next we will see what is the action of parathormone on kidneys so the kidneys in the kidneys the parathormone act on the distal tubular cells mainly the distal tubular cells of the kidney so when parathormone binds on to the receptor on the distal tubules it causes an increased reabsorption of calcium so that the calcium will not go out through the urine but is reabsorbed back into the blood now it's got one more function it acts on the proximal tubules also see in the proximal tubules they inhibit the phosphate receptors phosphate channels okay so what will happen there will be decreased reabsorption of phosphate which means the phosphate will be excreted out into the urine. Okay, So there are, there are two opposing functions. One there is calcium reabsorption. Other there is phosphaturia or pho decreased phosphate reabsorption. 
Now there is one more function for parathormon in the kidneys. What it does is it will go into the, it will uh, stimulate the genes to produce increased 1-alpha hydroxylase. So what is the use of 1-alpha hydroxylase? 1-alpha hydroxylase will convert the inactive form of vitamin D to its active form that is 125-dihydroxycalcitriol. So this vitamin D can act also act synergistically with the parathormone to increase calcium absorption. So see both first of all parathormone can increase calcium reabsorption. Secondly it can stimulate the conversion of vitamin D so that the calcium reabsorption is increased. Okay, So there are two methods by which parathormone acts on the kidney to increase calcium reabsorption. So it acts on the renal tubules increase the reabsorption of calcium from the distal tubules, stimulates the formation of 125-dihydroxycholicalciferol, thereby increasing the serum calcium, and it also inhibits phosphate reabsorption in the proximal tubule causing phosphatoria. Right? Next, we can see the action on intestine. So in the intestine, so suppose this is the intestinal cell, the parathormone acts on the parathormone receptor, and see, remember, we know that parathormone is the hormone that activates vitamin D. So parathormone here also it activates vitamin D and it is through vitamin D that we've got an increased calcium reabsorption. So parathormone directly doesn't have an action, it acts through vitamin D. So vitamin D will cause increased reabsorption of calcium. Not only that, it will cause an increase in the calcium binding protein which is cal binding which will transport calcium out of the cell via pump mechanism. So see this is how vitamin D3 or parathormon indirectly via vitamin D3 causes reabsorption of calcium. Now vitamin D3 also has the ability to produce an increased phosphate reabsorption also. So this is how parathormon acts on the intestine. So parathormon promotes the synthesis of vitamin D so it increases calcium absorption from the gut and also phosphate absorption from the intestine. Okay, thereby there is an increased serum calcium at phosphate levels. Now for some additional scoring points, you can also maybe mention the mechanism of action of parathormone. How does the parathormone act? So if you go in detail, we can see that the parathormone has got two mechanism of action. Basically it's a G protein coupled receptor, but it can act on adenyl cyclase to produce increased CAMP and thereby activation of the protein kinases. But it's got one more mechanism, that is it can activate the IP3 DAJ mechanism, thereby causing an activation of PKC and increased calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum. So parathormone has got two mechanisms, one by increasing CAMP and others through IP3 and DAG. Another additional scoring point is you can also write about the regulation of parathormone. See we know that the primary factor that regulates parathormone is calcium. So when the serum calcium decreases, there will be really increased secretion of parathormone, right? And parathormone will act on the bone to cause increased bone resorption. It also activates vitamin D, D3 so that there is increased reabsorption of calcium and phosphate from the GI. Okay, so hereby the calcium, the serum calcium will return to normal. But we've got a problem here. Phosphate has also increased. So remember. The parathormone also has action on kidneys wherein that decreases the phosphate reabsorption whereas increase the calcium reabsorption and thus the phosphate is brought to normal and the serum calcium alone increases. So this is a mechanism by which the parathormone is regulated. Moving on we can also mention some applied aspects like hypo, the most common one is hyperparathyroidism which is usually after seen after thyroidectomy. So you can expect essay questions which in which you can see that there is a injury to the parathyroid after thyroidectomy. Okay, And you can uh, write about the signs and symptoms also. So in a nutshell, you, uh, when a question like this is asked in the introduction, you can write about the parathyroid glands and also mention about this calcium sensing receptor so because that is why the parathyroid gland detects the le level of calcium in the blood and then you can move on to write about the action on the bone, action on the kidney, action on the intestine and also some uh, applied aspects. So I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.